pleasant good day to all tuning in to Christ Jesus' Law Ministries. I want to thank all those who have been supporti supportive of this ministry. Those who have been taking the time out to listen to these timely Bible studies and these Bible-based presentations. Uh, today will be no different. As I have often said, here the Bible speaks. If it's in the Word, it will be heard. And if it's in the book, we will take a look. And we are not here to entertain you with riddles and rhymes and fancy gimmicks and talks. But we are here to teach you what the Bible says, to teach you what the Word of God says so that you can be a better man, a better woman, a boy or a girl who can walk in the destiny that God has prepared for you from the foundation of the world according to Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 4. Our last Bible study presentation was Under Attack. It was entitled Under Attack when witchcraft and evil altars are raised against you. Today we'll be looking at part 2. And as I have stated that to attack means to take strong action against, to try to hurt, injure, or destroy a thing or person. To attack also means to use harsh words against a person. According to the Webster's Dictionary, it says, Attack, to attack, means to set upon or work against forcefully. It also means to assail with unfriendly or bitter words. Thirdly, it means to begin to affect or act on injuriously. The last studies we look at the parable spoken of Jesus of Lazarus. And you could take the time out to listen to that. I can assure you. It would not be a waste of your time. You will receive spiritual insights and enlightenment concerning Lazarus, the man who was sick and was placed at the rich man's gate. Today we'll be looking at another portion of scripture. Matthew chapter 17 verse 14 through to 21 and we see that the parallel text for it is Mark 9 verse 14 through to 29 also there's a parallel text in St. Luke chapter 9 before any further ado let us pray father we give you thanks we bless your name we glorify your name we thank you for all those who are tuning in all those who are watching and listening father i pray that you will bless the hearts and the minds and pray that you will enlighten them give them spiritual insights as you say by knowledge shall the just be delivered and for lack of knowledge my people are destroyed father many of us are under attack and we do not know so father you have sent me here today to open the eyes of those who are spiritually blind and to confirm also that which some knows but they are waiting for a word of confirmation from you father i pray that you'll cover us all under your blood protect us from the hands of the enemy and the wicked one and from the attacks of witchcraft evil altars father i pray that you will cover us under your blood and help us to use that power you have given us to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the works of the enemy Father, you said, only with our eyes shall we see and behold the reward of the wicked. It shall not come nigh our dwelling. So, Father, we pray that you will help us to walk in our destiny and to walk in the blessing which you have blessed us with from the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians 1, verses 3 and 4. Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Be with Christ Jesus, his Lord's ministry. And I pray you will be with all those who are tuning in and all those who listen in in Jesus' name I pray Amen Amen It is said that knowledge is power Another said power is the use of knowledge Proverbs chapter 11 
verse 9b says, By knowledge shall the just be delivered. Many are living still in need of deliverance. Many are unaware, lacking knowledge. Therefore, they are perishing. They are an under constant attack by devils and demons. Attacks from the four-way crossroads of evil altars, marine altars, astral altars, forest altars, tree altars, stone and sand altars, effigy altars, gate altars. All manner of evil altars are erected by ancestors of the past, by enemies of the present, by witches and wizards and even more soul enemies. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Verse 14 through to 29. Records a very interesting story. From verse 1 through to 13 tells us of the transfiguration of Jesus when he took Peter, James and John and he went up into the mountain and he was transfigured. Moses and Elijah appeared unto him and Peter because he's a talkative person said let us build thee three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Elias and one for Moses and the cloud took them away. So nine disciples were left at the bottom of the mountain. And not only were nine disciples left there, but there was a crowd of people because wherever Jesus went, he drew a crowd. Not only was there a crowd with the nine disciples, but there were also scribes and Pharisees. You know, they were always looking on argument or to reason with Jesus or to try and trap him with his teachings. So, it is recorded that verse 14 of Mark chapter 9, and I'll read, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, with which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples and they, that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him, and said, O faithfulless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, Matthew, I like the way Matthew records this occurrence and this narrative as it is put forth by Matthew. Matthew says, and when they were come to the multitude, that is Matthew chapter 17, and we take it from verse 14 to, to 21. He says, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man. So Matthew did not give us all the details as Mark gave us about the scribes and the Pharisees there. And questioning the disciples. But he went straight into the story. And gave us what happened. He didn't bother with the extra information. As put forth by Mark. He said and when they were come to the multitude. They came to him a certain man. Kneeling down to him and saying. Lord have mercy on my son. For he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For often time he has fallen into the fire and up into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Then said Jesus and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him either to me. We see that there is a similarity 
between Mark and Matthew here. Mark chapter 9 verse Mark chapter 9 verse 19 and Matthew chapter 17 and verse 17 they are similar verse 18 of Matthew chapter 17 and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour then the disciples then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Albeit this kind goeth not out by prayer. And fasting pretty interesting under attack when witchcraft and evil altars are multiplied and raised against you we look at a portion of scripture a narrative according to mark in chapter 9 14 the narrative tells us the story of one who was under constant attack from evil altar and how he was delivered from such attacks. In this study, you will learn the power and method to overcome, subdue, defeat, and trample under feet every evil attack sent against you and family members, whether it be from witchcraft or evil altars. It doesn't matter what kind of altars they come from. You will learn based on Jesus' method and what he taught the disciples how to overcome such evil. Jesus had been to the mount wherein he was transfigured. Peter, James and John were there to witness it as I have reported before. The remaining nine disciples were left at the foot of the mountain with a great multitude awaiting the parousia that's the coming, the presence of Jesus. The Bible states that when Jesus came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. That's verse 15 of Mark chapter 9. They were surrounded by scribes who were questioning them. What they were asking, the Bible did not say, and I will not assume. Jesus, Jesus inquired of the scribes, what is it? they were questioning his disciples about and we see that in verse 16 verse 17 tells us that and one of the multitude answered and said the scribes did not answer jesus and let's read mark chapter 9 verses 17 through 18 it says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Verse 18, And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, and they should not cast him out. No. It's interesting to note that in the original language of the scriptures, the Greek, verse 15 of Matthew chapter 17, it says, Lord have mercy on me and my son, for he is a lunatic. No, Mark said, that the father said Master I brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit now there is a difference between the rendering of the words used here in both gospels in Matthew 
it is the only place along chapter 4 in another verse of Matthew where the word lunatic is being used. Now, it is interesting to note that the man made mention that he brought the disciples, he brought the son who was possessed with a lunatic spirit or with a dumb spirit and the disciple could not cure him as Matthew says and Mark said they could not cast him out in the Greek the translation or the transliteration says they had no power to cast him out or they had no power to cause the demon to take leave from the young man now let us go now for average person reading the portion of scripture of Mark chapter 9 verses 17 and 18 it will be easy and quick to believe the boy was a demoniac or as some would say he was epileptic However, I'm going to shut down the part of the belief which, 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 which teaches or is that the boy was epileptic. And that I will do without any apology. The boy was not suffering from epilepsy. He was under an attack from evil altars. Someone, an enemy, had used witchcraft, astral altars, against the boy from his early childhood. You may be saying, what? What astral altars has to do with the boy running around, throw himself in the fire? throwing himself in the water, foaming and farting, pining away and tearing in himself. I believe the father must have exhausted all the physical places of aid, the temple, the synagogues, the rabbins, the priests, the Levites, the teachers of the law and the known existed psychiatrists of his day but received no help. The Greek word and translation of the text for lunatic in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 15 means to be moonstruck. To be moonstruck does not mean the moon shone brilliantly upon one on a moonlit night. It does not mean that the moon shines on him on a particular time and it causes him to behave erratic and maniacal as he was behaving according to verse 18 of Mark chapter 19 where he says, And wheresoever he taketh him, notice, it did not say the moon taketh him, but wherever he taketh him, which means that he was speaking of Someone, he there is a personal pronoun which refers to an individual. A person, a being. Not an animal or a thing. You refer to as an animal as it. Or a thing as it. But it says here, he taketh him. And wheresoever he taketh him. The dumb spirit, the lunatic spirit, according to Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, which comes from the word lunar. And I am going to shed some light on this word here. Well, it says it is widely believed in the ancient world that epilepsy was due to the influence of the moon. It also states that in Matthew chapter 17, 15, that 
the word that is translated there which means moonstruck that many translators have a problem in translating this passage of scripture more so it says that the word occurs nowhere else in ancient Greek literature except in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 15 and three times in a treatise by the astrologer Vettius Valens who wrote in the second century AD he said by etymology the word means moonstruck the word Selenia Zomai that's the word in Matthew 17 he said the symptoms described resemble those of epilepsy but the malady is caused not by the moon but by a demon in Vettius Valens some specific disease seems to be referred to but it is not described so here he's saying that this passage of scripture here is one that we are to take note of and we are to understand that it's not by happenstance that Matthew used such words to describe the young man Matthew was helping us to understand that the young man was under an attack from outside influence it was no physical ailment that caused him to be foaming to be wreathing to be pining away to be casting himself down in the fire and to be casting himself down in the water trying to kill himself an astral altar was lifted at him here as I've just read that the astrologer Vettius Valens who wrote in the second century AD says that moon to be moonstruck it's not caused by the moon but by a demon Now, it should be understood that what is implied here is that supernatural influence, whether of demons or of the moon, was used against the young man but according to Vettius Valens in his writing in his treatise this astrologer he was helping us to understand that it is through the powers of the moon that this young man was afflicted that will help us to understand more According to a former occultist, an astral altar is used by those who engage in astrology or star reading. The practitioners use the potential in the powers of the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, and other planets to deal with their victims. So that is exactly what they were doing to this young man from he was a little child someone summoned the powers the demonic powers from the astral alder, uh, altars to deal with this young man to emasculate his destiny his childhood you can just imagine the many scars on this child to show you how often he has been under the attack and has been afflicted by this lunatic spirit that was projected from the altar of these practitioners 
most occulted people deceive. They engage with and manipulate people who are ignorant of astral altars for their selfish ends. Many lives have been destroyed through satanic manipulations of the powers of the heavenly bodies. Now, Proverbs 11 verse 9b says, By knowledge shall the just be delivered. I can assure you that this father spoken of in Matthew chapter 17 and Mark chapter 9 knew nothing of astral altars. He knew nothing of one's ability or the ability of individuals to summon the potential powers of heavenly bodies to do harm to his son or to any other individual as a matter of fact. He was unaware that people could do such wickedness through the powers of the heavenly bodies. In many cases, mental disorder or depression, waywardness or outright madness according to one former occultist can be attributed to astral manipulation. So many times when you see people mad, out of their mind, insane, people are in deep depression, distress, and people are just wayward, outright. It is not because they took crack cocaine or smoke marijuana. It is not because they hit the crack pipe. It is because there are wicked people who have used astral altars to manipulate these people's destiny. Therefore, causing them to operate the way they do operate. Many people you see on the street, they didn't want to be on the street. But they were led to be on the street because they lack knowledge. And Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6 said, Because a lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. So if one does not know that witchcraft of such magnitude exists, wherein one can go and summon the heavenly bodies, to do harm to you and rob you of your destiny and let you become a nobody, a good for nothing, a wayward, insane, acting stupid and then they would ascribe all kind of physical malady to you saying that you are epileptic or you are schizophrenic. So when you see Scrappy, little boy Scrappy, jumping up and down and acting all maniacal, you check it. Ah, uh, an altar may just have been raised again, Scrappy. And Pucci, he might just be suffering from the projection of witchcraft at him to behave maniacal, saying that he is God. The Bible tells us that we should seek knowledge, seek wisdom. And in all getting of our knowledge and wisdom, we should get understanding. In Proverbs chapter 8, Solomon says, When wisdom has entered your heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul, understanding shall keep thee, discretion shall preserve thee. It hurts me time and time again when I speak with individuals and they say, they don't believe in witchcraft, yet still they say they believe in the Bible. They are preaching from the Bible, they are teaching from the Bible, they are in church every Saturday or Sunday. Yet still, the Bible teaches about witchcraft and tells you that you should 
not indulge in such demonic and wicked activities which is from the kingdom of darkness because it's an abomination unto God and because of that God drove out the Canaanites from before the children of Israel and gave the children of Israel the land of Canaan for a possession now the Bible tells us that this young man was under constant attack he tells us that wheresoever he that's the dumb spirit take it him he teared him and he foamed and gnashed it with his teeth and pined it away so this young man didn't have any control over himself it was this spirit that was projected at him through the potential powers of the heavenly bodies that were controlling him so if the spirit want him to go jump in the sea he would jump in the sea now I asked someone I was reading this I, 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 I said the father and I don't know if we think along the line that I do think. Maybe some of you might. I ask myself the question. Why is it that all the time the young man finds himself falling in the fire and finds himself falling into the water? It's obvious. The spirit wanted to not only torment and torture the young man, but then ultimately to kill him. Because by falling into the water, he could drown, because he's going to foam. I've seen uh, when I was in school at a young age, there was a young man there who had what they say was epilepsy. And that was bad 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 when he would it would come upon him he would fall to the ground and he would foam and he would make some strange sound then they would take his shoe off his feet and put over his face to say that would get him well now learning about all these stuff I see that in itself was vain tradition witchcraft in itself because how could one suffering from epilepsy as they said then could be healed by smelling a stinky shoe you understand but now as I have become Christian and I learn the scripture and learn of these madness and folly that people are engaged in and wickedness should say that I understand what happened to that young man that young man did not receive cure he did not receive healing ultimately what happened to him I learned someone stopped him and killed him and he was there going about growing up had that thing and it would just come upon him suddenly he would be at class and the thing just come at school and that thing come upon him suddenly and the result he died in the state that was I said very much sad on his part the Bible says that the disciples could not cast out the evil spirits well that's what the man says he says in verse 18 that the should cast him out and they could not the Greek translation said that they had no power the transliteration they had no power now you remember in the gospel of Luke when Jesus sent out the 70 he said they came back rejoicing saying that even devils tremble and are subject to thy name that's what they reported back to Jesus and Jesus said, do not marvel at this, but marvel that your names are written in the books 
in heaven. And he said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the works of the enemy. And no evil shall overcome you. Now, what happened to that power? How is it that the disciples had no power? We're going to get to that. The man himself said, he said he had no power over the lunatic spirit, the dumb spirit, to cast him out. I can just imagine the disciples trying all in their power, but failing miserably before the crowd and the devils. They were jeered, they were ridiculed, they were mocked, and they were criticized. Now, let us look at Matthew <laughs> chapter 17 as Matthew records the story. I like the way Matthew records the story. Matthew says, When the man said that to Jesus, Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him either to me. How faithless. Jesus said that the disciples were faithless. Said that the generation were faithless and perverse. And Jesus was asking, how long will he be with them? He said Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him. In Mark, Jesus, it is recorded that Jesus told him never to enter back into the young boy. Because you know what? The Bible teaches when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks in dry places seeking rest, and he findeth none. Then he said to himself, I will return to my house from whence I came. And he said he goes back, he finds a house swept and garnished, and then he goeth. And take it seven more spirit more wicked and dangerous than himself. Then he goes back into that individual. And that individual state is worse than the first. Now, when Jesus authorized something, whether it be to demons or men, he means it. And as Jesus commanded those demons never to enter back, into the young man who was under attack for all his life or most of his life from he was a child Jesus cast them out and the Bible said he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour he said that the disciples came to Jesus Apart, so not while the crowd was there. I said, why could not we cast them out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, You shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, And it shall be removed, And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Obey this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The Bible in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In verse 6 it says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who cometh unto him must believe that he is, and that it is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance is something tangible. And evidence is something that you can see. But here in the text, it said the evidence of things not see. But what it tells us that we have to have complete trust in God. Trust in the divine power and merit of God's righteousness that he will do and grant unto us the things that we ask of him 
according to his will for our lives. Though we do not see it, we know by trusting in him and depending on him totally that it will come to pass and that it will happen. Some will argue, some will teach, some will preach, some will say that faith is the word of God. Well, that I will not accept because there is nowhere the Bible tells me that. Because if I should say faith is the word of God, I would say that according to Colossians, according to the teacher, that by the word of God, the heavens were framed. So are you telling me that it's by faith that God created the worlds? According to Hebrews, are you telling me that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and Jesus is the word of God? So what are you telling me that? Je no, we, we are reasoning. Are you telling me that Jesus is faith? of God and we I could go on and on and quote scripture and we could ask question reasoning I'm not disrespecting anyone I'm not putting down anyone but when we come with the scripture we have to be in line put precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little now we need to have faith And we need to believe God. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Think with many of us that we lack faith. We do not even understand the concept of faith, or we do not understand the subject of faith what faith is many of us understand the quote Hebrews chapter 11 verse and faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen substance is something material faith is that which is tangible which we hope for we want to see whatever we we are living in the physical we want God is a spirit so when we go to God we have to go to him in spirit and in truth we have to believe him for what he says in his word and go to him according to what his word teaches and the Bible says in Psalm that nothing good Psalm 84 verse 11 I believe Nothing good will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. So, if we go to God on this basis, being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and knowing that he said that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings from the foundation of the world, then going to him, we being physical, in the physical, living on earth, God is our spirit, then what we ask in him, which we go to him, worshipping him in spirit and in truth, asking him for something in the spirit, who is spirit, such will be made manifest in the physical, which will in turn become tangible or should we say material. And we will be able to see that manifest in our lives. Let us go forward. Matthew 21 verse, Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 says, O be this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The disciples were in fasting and praying. Because if we should but, uh, read the Gospels, we see that the scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, How is it that your, your disciples do not fast as the disciples of John fast? And he said, Why would they fast when the bridegroom is with them? But after the bridegroom has gone, then they would fast, which was speaking of himself. 
so it's imperative for us to know that there are some devils there are some demons that will not move out of our lives we will not get the victory over them there are some situations that we face except that we fast and pray not just pray I, the, Jesus did not say fast or pray and then you choose just to pray he said fast and pray it did not go out but by fa prayer and fasting now we need to understand the word here kind used mean this rank what Christ was saying to his disciples this rank of the demonic this rank of devils do not go out but through prayer and fasting and if we read Isaiah 58 we will see how we are to go about praying and fasting I will not zeroing much on what to do and what not to do when prayer and fasting I'll have to do a separate study on the subject of prayer and fasting that in itself is a study in and of itself so Jesus was letting us know that we need to pray and fast many of us are digging our graves prematurely with our knives and fork because we are given to appetite we are given to gluttony we love our bellies and if we are to have power we have to pray and fast and if we have to have power, power over these rank of devils that they are sending through astral altars, marine altars, gates. And all the other kind of altars. As I mentioned before in this study as we started. We need to pray and fast. Saying the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Lead me beside still waters. He restored my soul will not cause devils to flee the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked come upon me to eat up my flesh they stumble and fled Psalm 27 reciting the psalm alone will not do this will not cause devils and demons to flee and to break their hold and to be cast out of your life or the life of individuals you know or to cease their attacks upon you or your loved ones or people you know Jesus said this kind went not out but by prayer and fasting and Jesus let us know that when we pray and we fast we must not do it as unto men in Matthew chapter 5 he tells us that when we pray and fast you know the disciples are made mention the disciples of John rather I said the disciples of John came to Jesus and said why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but thy disciples fast not? Jesus answered and said, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. So, Jesus was with the disciples, so they weren't fasting. But Jesus, we saw, he went on a 40-day fast. I'm not saying you should go on a 40-day fast. But Jesus says, whether it be a one day, a two day, a three day, seven day, ten day, or forty days, when you fast, Jesus says, you must 
follow the protocol as outlined in Isaiah chapter 58 where you must not do it to be seen of men but you must do it as unto God you must deal your bread to the hungry and those who are naked you close them they who are afflicted and they who are bruised you should help them the chapter is there you can read it and see what it says about fasting in Isaiah chapter 58 now Mark chapter 9 we will return there and I will bring to our knowledge some things that jumps out at me there wherein the Bible tells us that oftentimes it that the spirit cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him and the father said but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us this man was at a place wherein he said he doesn't know what next lies ahead of him he has tried everything and it has failed now he came to Jesus who was his only hope his last hope he said but the spiritual seeking to destroy his son by casting him into the fire wicked spirits are seeking to destroy me by defeating my purpose changing my destiny robbing my destiny wreaking havoc in my life my financial life my marriage my education my children my work my friends my spiritual life but if thou canst do anything help us Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe you realize Jesus respond to him he used the subjunctive which suggests doubt Jesus used back then at him if in other words there's a possibility and there is a possibility that you will have faith and there's a possibility that you will not have faith in me or in God if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth and I'm here to tell someone if you can believe all things are possible unto you if you can believe Jesus word here in Matthew chapter 9 verse 23 verse 24 the father says it says and straight where the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe help though my unbelief father was at the mercy of Jesus telling Jesus whatever is standing in the way of his faith or might cause his faith to waver and not to believe he Jesus who is the resurrection of the life he who all power is given to him in heaven and in earth according to Matthew 28 the last two verses he says help me because all power belongs to you Jesus says all power is given to me in heaven and in earth so he was resting his life his son's life 
his son's future, his son's healing in this man from Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, who he knew cast out devils, healed sick, raised dead, walked on water, turned water into wine and feed multitudes with five loaves and two fishes bible says in verse 25 that jesus rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit matthew made mention of just one spirit He said, Jesus rebuked the devil. He didn't say a spirit here. But here, Mark helped us to understand that there were more than one evil spirit in the young man. It was a dumb spirit and a deaf spirit. The father only recognized the dumb spirit. But Jesus recognized both the dumb and the deaf spirit. And Jesus said, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And he said, the spirit left him. And he was as one dead. But then, Jesus took him by the hand. And Jesus gave him to his father. Jesus says that had Jesus said to the father if thou canst believe all things is possible I'm saying to you in the ear of my voice you only need to believe <coughs> excuse me you only need to believe and believe in Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. The one who says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and on the work of the devil, and no evil shall befall you. The one who says, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. And the one who says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He who says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus says, if you can only believe in him, you can say to this mountain, be removed. Whatever the mountain is standing in your way today, whatever mountain is blocking you from going forward, blocking your progress, blocking you from reaching your destiny, walking in your God-given destiny, whatever is blocking your blessings, whatever is hindering you from going forward. Jesus says, if you can believe, you can say to it, be removed and cast in the midst of the sea, and it will be cast. I'm here to tell you as I close, that it's important for us today to teach our kids and to teach the younger generation and to teach the people who are under our tutelage concerning the word of God. That witchcraft, this system which is used to control, manipulate and to ultimate destroy, ultimately destroy its victim is real. And we need to show them from the scripture. And that, what we see in the Bible is not as some pseudo scholars, false teachers out there who are propagating that these are not real. There are many who are seeking to treat witchcraft um, problems with medical remedies from hospital, pills and that kind of, those kinds of things. But that will not work. I can just imagine that they have tried everything with this young man. And today too, I've seen it. Many are sick. They are treating them for epilepsy when it is from the demonic, generational curse, bloodline curse, witchcraft, evil altars. 
you cannot treat witchcraft with medical remedies, herbal remedies, or that kind of thing. You have to deal with it as Christ says. This kind, you can only overcome it with prayer and fasting. I pray, I hope, I trust that I've helped someone. I pray, I hope, I trust that you would have looked in yourself and know that whatsoever you are going through, that Jesus has given you the remedy, which is prayer and fasting and faith in him. Faith in God to please him. Because if you do not have faith, you won't be able to please God. If you do not please God, how can you be released from oppression? I pray, I trust that you will seek God's face. And you will seek to be obedient to his laws, his commandments and his statutes. And by so doing, to be in favor with God and with men. And accordingly, I'm going to finish off with this one verse found in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 7. It says, Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. This is a law. So when they send their astral projection at you, their marine altars, their stone, their forest, their effigy, their pictorial, whatever kind they erect against you, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. Because the Bible says, He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first step in abiding under the shadow of the Almighty is to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and I hope and trust that you have learned something from this Bible presentation. Please share it hit the notification bell so when I upload new uh, videos you will be notified and I pray that you will leave a comment and for those who are not subscribed you could subscribe I bless you all in Jesus name and may God keep you and protect you from all the wickedness of evil altars and witchcraft as you seek to abide under a shadow and to dwell in a secret place through obedience is my prayer for you let us pray father i bless your name i glorify your name i give you thanks i give you praise for all those in the ear of my, my voice i pray that you will cover us all under your blood protect us from all the evil altars that exist help us father to be obedient to your laws your commandments help us to be knowledgeable of the things which exist concerning witchcraft and evil altars and the things that people do because your word teaches us that such are real and such are true and father the only way for us to be released from these curses bloodline generational and evil altars witchcraft sorcery is through prayer and fasting help us to pray and to fast and to follow the protocol of true prayer and fasting as outlined in isaiah chapter 58 is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Hit the notification bell. Like, share, leave a comment, subscribe. God bless you all. Have a good day.